So the last part of chapter two, um, we're gonna briefly discuss connective tissues. We're gonna talk more about this next fall in our modalities class when we're talking about soft tissue mobilization. We will get into more detail. Um, but we're just gonna touch on it now because it's relevant. Um, and then functional considerations, um, the book likes to have talk about functional considerations because we are talking about um, how these function in human systems. So um, it's, it's always good to say, well, so what? So what do these connective tissues give us? Um, how do the joints work for us? So it's always nice to consider um, how it affects function. So really, strictly speaking, um, bone is classified as a connective tissue, but it's special. Um, but then all of our other connective tissues, um, fascia, tendons, ligaments, joint capsules, um, they are all composed of fibers, ground substance, and cells. So um, the, it's the blend of those things that, and the proportions of them that uh, determine what type of connective tissue we're talking about and how they're arranged. So we have some connective tissues that are arranged in a more organized fashion, like tendons and ligaments, and some of them they're kind of higgledy-piggledy, you know, where they're um, a little bit more loose. And really, the arrangement of them is depends on the mechanical demands of the joint. Like, what do we need? Do we need cartilage that's going to be super tough? Do we need ligaments that are going to restrict motion? Or do we need something that's a little flexier, like the joint capsule? So the fiber types that we see in connective tissues are um, really a, a large, the most abundant protein in our body is collagen, but we have different types of collagen fibers. So type one collagen fibers are tough, thick fibers that resist elongation. So you can imagine we want the ligaments made out of those tough type one fibers. Tendons, because those guys have to pull. They're transmitting the force of the muscle to the bone. Um, the fibrous capsules that are keeping our joints congruent, those need to be tough. Those are the collagen fibers. Um, the type two collagen, or the toes of the type one collagen fibers, the type two collagen fibers are thinner and less stiff than type one fibers. So things that have to be more flexible, that sort of the flexible woven framework for maintaining general shape and consistency of structures. So a lot of the fascia and the um, subcutaneous um, tissue is um, composed of type one collagen fibers in some sort of ground substance. So elastin, just like it na its name sounds, it's elastic. Anything that ends in IN or EN is usually a protein. So elastin is um, a more elastic protein. So elastin resists tensile forces, but it has a little more give than collagen does. So a lot of times elastin is used in tissues that have to bend a lot, have to stretch a lot. Um, and they're, it's useful for preventing injury because they allow the tissue to bend, but not be brittle. Um, ground substance is primarily composed of glycosaminoglycans or GAGs, um, water and solutes. So um, it allows the fibers to exist in a fluid-filled environment, and it helps to disperse repetitive forces. So the fluid-filled environment has a couple different um, functions, one of them being nutritive functions. The nutrients can get to the cells. Um, and the other is that um, dispersive, uh, force dispersive aspect of it. Um, the cells that live in the connective tissues, those guys are responsible for the maintenance and repair of the tissues that constitute the joints. So the, uh, in the fluid-filled environment, the cells can get the nutrients they need, they can get rid of, rid of the waste products from the, their cellular metabolism, and they can produce the elastin and the collagen and the other things that are needed for maintenance and repair of those tissues. So. The four basic types of connective tissue that form the structure of joints are dense, irregular um, connective tissue, articular cartilage, fibrocartilage, and bone. There are other types. Dense, regular connective tissues are like tendons and ligaments, and we will talk more about those in other classes. But 
specifically talking about joints, we're talking about dense irregular, which is going to be your, your joint capsule, articular cartilage, which is on the ends of the bones, um, fibrocartilage, which a lot of times is in those um, amphiarthrotic joints, um, so it abs absorbs forces, and then bone, of course, bones are bony levers. So dense irregular connective tissue binds bones together and restrains unwanted movement of joints. So ligaments and the tough external layer of joint capsules, that's kind of their job, is to, to restrict excess motion of joints. Um, they're primarily those tough type 1 collagen fibers and low elastin content because they're trying to hold things steady and we don't want too much stretch. Articular cartilage resists and distributes compressive and shear forces transmitted through articular surface. And it also gives you that sliding surface that you need for the roll, slide, and spin aspects of um, the arthrokinematics. Um, it covers the end of those articulating bones and synovial joints. Um, a lot of type 2 collagen fibers, um, and those help anchor the cartilage to the bone. So if you've ever, um, like, Cut, cut apart a whole chicken, their, their sternum's kind of pointy, it's made out, it's, it's sort of like the cartilage, it's that bendy um, kind of uh, connective tissue. So it has some elasticity to absorb those forces. Fibrocartilage provides support and stabilization to joints. It provides um, shock absorption by resisting and dispersing compressive and shear forces. Intervertebral discs are made of um, fibrocartilage, the menisci of the knees, and the um, pubic symphysis is made up of fibrocartilage. And then we have little fibrocartilage discs in our wrists and our ankles too. So think of it as a support and stabilization of the joints. Um, they're multi-directional bundles of that tough type 1 collagen. So fibrocartilage is, um, those multi-directional bundles allow forces from different directions and it's going to disperse those forces. So bone forms the primary supporting structure of the body and provides a rigid lever to transmit muscle force to move and stabilize the body. Um, those are our bony levers. It's the internal lever levers of the musculoskeletal system. Bones are, um, a, a large amount of bone is made up of collagen. Um, so it's type 1 collagen, the tough kind, provides the framework for then those um, phosphorus and calcium salts to be stored in. So um, I think that's neat that there's so much collagen in our bone. It gives us some, uh, some bounce. So tendons and ligaments, um, they have a similar um, fibrous composition, but the arrangement and functions differ significantly. So tendons connect muscle to bone and convert muscular force into bony motion. And so they have the parallel alignment of collagen fibers, very neat, very organized. Um, ligaments connect bone to bone and they maintain a joint structure. So they have a more irregular crossing patterns of collagen fibers because they're trying to disperse forces. So the pattern is more irregular. So if you look at a um, tendon versus a ligament under the microscope, the tendon you'll see is much more regular. The um, ligament has more um, crisscross pattern of fibers. So um, bony conformation and ligamentous networks provide static stability for joints. But muscles actually function as active stabilizers. So the bones and the ligaments, they provide some static stability, but as we're moving, the muscles have to adjust to actively stabilize our joints. Uh, muscles can't respond as quickly as ligaments to external force, but they allow a graded and more controlled response. Um, and it's a more dynamic response. So um, a lot goes into stabilizing our joints. Some of it is the connective tissue, some of it is muscle. And when we talk about all the different muscles we, we will talk about and all the different joints, um, we will talk about um, what goes into the stability and the mobility of that joint because we need both. When connective tissues and muscles are immobilized, um, stiffness is increased and the tissue also has a decreased ability to withstand forces. So joint immobilization is not a good thing. Our bodies were made to move. Sometimes immobilization is necessary 
um, like you have a broken leg or something and they have to immobilize it to let it heal. Um, but it does make your joints more susceptible to injury and instability. So um, more and more now, um, they are minimizing the amount of immobilization. And there is now a relatively quick return to weight bearing and possibly specific strengthening exercises. So whereas in the past, when somebody fractured their ankle, and had um, ankle surgery to um, repair the fracture, a lot of times they would put them in a hard cast. Now, more often they put them in a walking boot. So they get them bearing weight as much as possible, as soon as possible. Um, so it's been, it's been found that um, early mobilization gets better healing. So um, a lot of times in PT, we're getting people moving right away. In our um, joint center programs where people have joint replacements, Someone might have surgery on a Thursday. They're in the hospital. They get, um, they're get they there maybe Friday. They get discharged Saturday. And Monday, they're getting their initial evaluation and outpatient PT. And on Wednesday, they're in my joint gym program doing their exercises. So um, they also mobilize them the day of surgery. The therapist um, and inpatient get them out of bed, get them walking, run them through exercises. So um, immobilization is the enemy. We want to keep moving. So as far as joints go, each type of joint has specific functional capabilities. Um, the range of motion and relative stability of a joint depend on the bony structure, the surrounding muscles, and the connective tissues. So with anything, there is a trade-off between stability and mobility of a joint. If a joint is more mobile, like the shoulder is a very mobile joint. However, it's not a very stable joint. Um, other joints that have less mobility have more stability. So every joint in the body has to find the balance between mobility and stability in order to function properly. So a lot of times in PT, we're working on both mobility and stability because we want to optimize function. That's our job. 